Now today we're doing something that many of you have asked for and that's an alternator replacement on a modern Acura. Now very quickly, typically I show on how to test and then replace a component. Today we'll flip it. So let me quickly show you how you can replace it and then toward the end I'll show you on how you can very very easily and crudely test an alternator. Now the first thing we're going to do is disconnect the negative terminal going to the battery and make sure you have the anti-theft code for the radio. This is just a little of PB Blaster. Now we're going to remove the drive belt from the vehicle. Perfect time to replace it if you happen to need one. So right here, power steering pump, alternator, and this is the tensioner. So this will release the tension on the belt. That's a 14 millimeter fastener, so 14 millimeter socket, 3H drive ratchet. Place it on the fastener, and we'll make an extension so it's not too hard to remove. Before you remove it, take a picture showing how the drive belt is routed, or just draw a quick diagram and you're ready to rock and roll. Now the tensioners are spring loaded. You need a lot of force, and this is not a long handle. So I just have another 14 millimeter socket, with an extension, but this is a half inch drive. So 3 inch drive, half inch drive, okay? Places right over it. And now, I have enough leverage to loosen up the belt. Okay, so let's bring this back a little bit. Hold on, camera in my way here, but here we go. See how this comes off real easily? And these are easy enough to replace. Do it yourself. Garage will charge you probably a hundred bucks to replace the belt. Now to allow a little bit more working room, I'm removing this fan shroud. There's not a lot of space to remove the alternator. It's a lot easier than it sounds. So right here you have the coolant reservoir bottle. You have a fastener right there. To remove it, just grab yourself a very long 10 millimeter wrench. A ratcheting wrench is key. As always, if you need any tools, I'll list that in. The description box below. And then we have two harness connectors. There's one right here. There's another one right down there toward the bottom. These are easy enough to remove. Before I do that, right here's a plastic tab. Just squeeze it in and push back. Okay, like this. Right here, 12 o'clock position. Press, pull. Okay. Bottom one I'll show you once I remove the shroud. And then you have two fasteners right here holding the entire assembly and then we can remove it. Now there is a bottom fastener holding on that shroud so we're quickly jacking up the vehicle. Of course don't forget your jack stands. Now if you still have the wind deflector installed on your vehicle, pretty easy to remove. You just have a number of these plastic tabs and you can actually purchase a tool to remove these but if you're delicate enough and careful enough you can actually do it at home with just a flathead screwdriver okay and if you ever need replacements again I'll have a link for you below okay so I've peeled back enough and right there is our fastener so as you can see it's not too bad and I'm doing this on film, so it's a little slower. But off camera, certainly it doesn't take this long. Right here is the harness connector. This is the lower one. And it's actually held in on a bracket. So to remove this, just push it out. I'm not sure if you can see this. Push it out toward that way, toward my left. Push, pull. Okay. So now we have the harness connector for the alternator, and this is a ground connector. So these are both protected by very heavy duty rubber boots. So I'm just peeling back the boot here. Try not to rip it. Okay, there's a tab right there. Press the tab, pull in the body. And this is the ground. Looks like a 12 millimeter. Whoops, there we go. Place it back so we don't lose it. 
and then we have a clamp down right here and two more fasteners and we're home free we have a 12 millimeter up here before I, I remove this I'm going to tackle a little hard to see but right down here at the 7 o'clock position right here is a 14 millimeter now just like before I'm just making an extension because it's so deep in the engine bay and there we go once again the top fastener 12 millimeter use a long wrench as always once again I'll have links in the description box below makes the job super super easier I know it's hard to see but there we go just be gentle take your time and there it is. So as you can see, it's not really a difficult job. On camera, this took me around 60, 70 minutes. So not filming it, you can certainly do it a little bit quicker. If you want to torque everything down, bottom fastener is 33, top one is 16. And then I'll show you very quickly on how you can test this guy. Okay, so very quickly, testing the alternator. This is sort of crude in a sense. It's not what a professional shop would use, but you will get a pretty good idea nonetheless. Now, you may have something like a battery tester, an alternator tester. Let's assume you don't. Chances are, if you're doing your own work on your vehicle, you have a multimeter. This is all you need. That's it. So on the multimeter, you want the volts DC setting. Okay. Positive is red, negative is black, okay? This is our battery voltage. That's a good reading, 12 and a half volts. So now we're going to start the car and turn on every electrical component. Turn on the heater, full blast, lights on their bright setting, turn on the radio, hazards, turn on everything, and let's see what the voltmeter is doing. Now taking a look at the voltmeter, you can see we're roughly under 14 volts. That's a good reading. If you're dipping below 13, then that's a very good sign that you need to replace the alternator. Let me show you what this looks like with everything off. Okay, turn off lights, heater. And as you can see, there's not a lot of change. So this is something, again, it's pretty crude, but once again, it can give you a really good idea if you have an issue with the alternator. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.